This is a bit of a different kind of video that I'm actually excited to share with you. Um, I just got finished leading a workshop that went hybrid. I delivered remotely. The group was in person, half the three quarters of the group was in person. 10 other people were remote. And uh, two little learnings and teachable moments that I actually wanted to invite you into the middle of the workshop. So uh, in a minute, I'm actually going to just queue up footage that I took during the workshop with a really important lesson that I think can help us all prevent burnout, uh, both in the moment and on a grander scale. And then uh, one other thing that I wanted to offer a share is how I closed the exercise because our brains tend to remember what happens first and last most. And so the way that we actually close down a meeting or a session matters quite a bit. And in fact, uh, in some ways I like to put something that really matters or could be especially useful or a gift for somebody. And I like to pack it into that end. And so there's about four minute uh, closing and it's literally recorded footage from exactly the way that I ended the session. I'm not retaking it. I recorded it in this office in the same shirt about 30 minutes ago. And you're just gonna get to see the live version of how I spoke to, let's see if I can jump to them real quick. To the, oh gosh, ah, this, group. You can't really see that. Uh, wow. This is going on longer than I thought. Let's cut a piece out of this. Oh my goodness. Can't see, really see it. Behind there, there's a group in person. Hybrid. Okay. Anyway. Um, and it was all really convenient because I had broken down my office and moved to a new office space, which is where I am now. Looks all neat, neat and uh, tidy here. Right beside the camera is a giant mess box. You can't really see it. Um, giant mess of other stuff. So anyhow, hope you find these two little tidbits useful. Spontaneous little learning here. So I am facilitating a workshop that is now hybrid. Group is in person. I am here in a new office that's really kind of only half put together. Uh, <laughs> pictures aren't even hanging up on the walls and uh, sending people on a break. And I just told them, um, I don't believe in breaks. I think they're bad. I think it's an intentionless way to spend time. And so what I have going right now, it's porting through Zoom, is a little timer that's a take what you need break, whether that's some food or coffee or the bathroom or who knows what, maybe you need a back stretch or a walk, etc. And I think that um, as leaders, one of the most useful things we can do for self-care rather than aftercare, which is which happens after people are burnt out, right? One of the most useful things we can do for self-care is regularly and in between meetings, be encouraging, take what you need breaks to say, hey, if you can duck out of a meeting or cancel a meeting this week or block on your calendar a half hour of take what you need where you actually just check in with yourself and you truly take what you need. Um, and so before I sent people out to add some intention to this, I just said, take 10 seconds and pay attention, right? Does your, is your back sore? Do you need to stretch? Do you need to go to the bathroom, right? Pay attention to what you actually need and go get that. That's your mission for 10 minutes. Go get what you need. Now, these breaks can be longer than 10 minutes too. Probably what we need takes a little bit longer than 10 minutes. All right. Hope this was useful for you. Have an awesome day. Cool, hope that was useful to get a little bit of uh, behind the scenes there. Now I wanna jump us right over into the closing. So the workshop was focused around how to ask powerful questions, went through three practical tools, did all this experiential stuff, right? We had, I had uh, sent cards to the group and so we did a big question swap and um, did all the interaction, all the engagement that I would typically do in person, just facilitated remotely thanks to um, Jeremy's hands, uh, by being my hands in the room. So now I just wanna jump you to the closing exercise, which was intended to be a little bit more reflective. We had done a lot of interacting and it was time to shift into just some uh, quieter reflection. But wanted to end with something that really mattered. And hopefully this meets that criteria. You decide. I recognize we're a little bit over time, so I'll make this quick and meaningful. First of all, uh, Becky, Heather, I am super lovely and it's kind of a beautiful segue into how I wanna wrap up. I was thinking, you know, I think the way that we close uh, time together really matters because our brains tend to remember what happens first and last most, and then we kind of fill in some bits in the middle. And so uh, when I jumped to what matters absolutely most, you know, it has a way of uh, making really clear what our priorities are in terms of what actually matters. 
is our own mortality, right? When we question our own mortality for even a couple seconds, priorities start to rearrange a little bit. And so I had mentioned that Will, my co-founder and co-author and partner in crime, uh, passed away in November. And uh, I'd love to actually end by sharing his three favorite questions. So the guy who quite literally wrote the book on how to ask questions, his three favorite questions. And I'm gonna invite you as a way of ending. Typically, when we end a thing like this, whether you liked it or not, whether you got something from it or not, we put our hands together like this and clap. And I'm gonna actually invite you to not clap. I'm gonna invite us um, at the end of this session to let your applause actually be as you filter out into lunch, just connecting over one of these questions instead of just a clap and eat. Um, I'll send a follow-up link if you want a little bit more depth of why these three questions. Um, but for right now, the questions are first, what brings you joy? There's only so much that we can do when it's not joyful before we get totally burnt out and look for something that is hopefully a little bit more joyful. What brings you joy? These are those questions that maybe you want to write in your letter to self to ship later or somewhere else in a notebook, wherever you please. What brings you joy? Mm. Before I go to the second one, um, the reason I'm sharing these with you, when Will died, um, I got, like the book actually did well and so like people actually read it and stuff. So I, got, I ended up getting like thousands and thousands of messages after Will passed away. And I got dozens and dozens of them though that fell into a very specific category of response. And they actually had almost the same template. And it went like this. I only ever met Will once, but it was one of the times I felt most seen and heard in my entire life. I only met Will once. I only interacted with Will once, but it was one of the times I felt most seen and heard in my entire life. And I think part of his secret was embedded in, uh, in these questions. What brings you joy? The next one, what is this moment teaching you right now? You want to develop yourself and other people? This is an infinitely useful question. What is this moment teaching you right now? It allows you to turn something good, awesome, or otherwise into a moment or a learning. I was once talking with the co-founder of uh, Whole Foods, John Mackey, and he shared with me something really brilliant, um, I thought. And he was, imagine if you walked through your life as if everyone else except for you was enlightened. So the person who cut you off on the highway and then flipped you off, they were the enlightened one and they were just there in this moment in your life to teach you something. And I think this question starts to accomplish that a little bit. What is this moment teaching you right now? And last, a good question to ask not in an exit interview. <laughs> what is a crossroads you are at and what about that is important? What is a crossroads you are at? And what about that is important? So again, I'm gonna invite you to not clap, but let your applause be the sounds of your voices filing off into lunch, choosing one of those questions to ask or answer to somebody next to you. If you enjoyed this and you want more, every week I send out a video with a little tip, um, et cetera, and a bunch of free resources, like free access to all the questions um, from that deck, et cetera. So I'll leave this up here in the last few minutes. If you wanna scan this and get some free stuff, feel free to. If not, no feelings hurt. Um, go eat, You, whether you chose to or not, you gave me uh, one of your only non-renewable resources, which is your time. And uh, I'm really, really, really grateful for that, because um, your attendance did not does not equal attention, um, and yet it was clear that most of you gave a lot of your attention um, throughout here, and I feel really appreciative. So, don't clap, um, but continue connecting. See ya. Hopefully, that was fun to go behind the scenes and under the desk a little bit. Um, I hope these two little, but I think significant learnings about how to do hybrid well, uh, translate and that you can ruthlessly steal and reinterpret them and apply them into their own context. One, stop taking breaks. Take, take what you need breaks or give people take what you need breaks. And two, close with intention. Close with something that really matters. Um, one thing you didn't see is right before that recording of my closing uh, ended, 
two people who were actually remote. So there's about 25, 30 people in the room and then 10 people who were also remote on Zoom with me. And uh, the company, the in, uh, group invited two remote people to share and actually read something that they had created in preparation for this um, workshop. And it was such a lovely way to involve and integrate people who otherwise tend to be forgotten uh, once the meeting session ends. They're just like, they just disappear into the vacuum of silence while everybody else goes off and pairs off and has lunch and has this um, greater than experience. So we want to make sure that uh, folks that are remote are not having, they're having a fundamentally different experience, but we want to make sure that it's not a lesser than experience. Cheers.